veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Amen. Well, I would like to invite the children to come forward at this time.
slip is also a way to uh, make a prayer request if there are prayers that you would like for Pastor Tim and myself, along with the staff and the congregational care prayer team to pray over. If there's information you'd like about the church, you can also request that on your attendance slip. And in your bulletin, I'd like to draw your attention to a few of the exciting things that we have going on in the life of the church. The first thing I want to point out to you is that next Sunday, July 1st, we have a great opportunity to support one of the youth in our congregation, and that is Marquita. And um, Marquita is a Girl Scout, and she's working on her Silver Award, which is a way uh, that Girl Scouts serve the community. And she has a goal of making 30 blankets to donate to four kids. And so we can help Marquita with this uh, by coming to her bake sale next weekend that she's uh, having to raise money to purchase the material to make the blankets. So that's happening next Sunday. And today, uh, at 4 p.m., we will be escaping the 92-degree heat that is predicted, and we will be going to Sandbridge. And we welcome you to come to Sandbridge. It's just a casual way for us to get together. Uh, we meet at the last bathhouse down that path, uh, across from it at Little Island Park. But I've also included my cell phone number in the bulletin. So if you're out at Sandbridge and looking for us, Give me a call and we will connect with you. And we will also be posting pictures of where we're at on Facebook. And finally, this coming Friday, if you are interested in serving in our community, a simple way you can do that is through something called Laundry with Love. It's where we go to the laundromat and uh, we help people do laundry and just share uh, some breakfast foods with them and uh, be in the community and get to know our neighbors. And that will be happening at 9.30 a.m. this Friday. Today we have the joy and privilege of doing two of the most important things that we celebrate together in community. And that is baptizing children and welcoming new families into membership. So right now I'd like to invite Nathan and Abby to come forward along with their families and we will go to the baptismal hall. Oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit. 
to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that in dying and rising with Christ, they may share in his final victory. Amen. Now, one of the exciting things is that Ethan and Abby are cousins, and I wanted to be baptized together this morning. So we will be baptizing Ethan first.
of Great Bridge United Methodist Church. And this is one of the greatest joys and responsibilities in the life of the congregation. It's the gift of sharing our lives together in our joys and in our sorrows and challenges that we walk beside one another. And when we do this, we are extending God's love and grace through the blessing of Christian love and fellowship. So this morning, I have these questions for you all. Do you, in the presence of God and this congregation, renew the vows and promise made at your baptism? If so, please respond by saying, I do. Do you believe in God the Father, creator of the heavens and the earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit who strengthens and sustains us in our journey? I may do you promise, according to the grace given to you, to keep God's holy will and commandments, as given in both the Old and New Testaments. And will you be faithful to this body in Christ, Great Bridge United Methodist Church, participating in the ministries of worship, fellowship, learning, and mission, through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, I commend to your love and care these persons whom this day we receive into membership of this congregation. Will you do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love? And your response is on the screen in front of you. Jesus Christ, to recognize you as a member of Christ's holy church. We need to welcome to the very great time of this church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold the body of Christ by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. By this witness to the world, we be known in the grace of God, working and living in us. Those times when we even have doubt in our faith and 
wonder if you are with us. We just pray that you give us strength and courage and make yourself known to us in those times. We pray, oh God, that you lead us, that you lead us gently with grace,
possible for us to become who God created us to be. So as disciples, we are dependent on these acts of the Holy Spirit to live into who God created us to be. But the Holy Spirit is also working in the world around us, and this is critically important too. This is important because, friends, when you look around, the world does not look the way God intends the world to be. And we need the Holy Spirit moving and working in our hearts and in the world to bring transformation. So as the 1,600 of us went out last Saturday afternoon in the community offering prayer to those in need and transforming corners where cemeteries have been abandoned for years and packing kits and going to classes on new ways to understand justice issues of racism and immigration and creation care, we saw the Holy Spirit moving. And it was amazing. You see, the Holy Spirit touches our lives and works in the world around us to do this transformative work that is necessary to change our hardened hearts and to make them softer. And to change and transform the world around us to reflect the kingdom and this work of the Holy Spirit is exciting and it is amazing to watch. It's exciting and amazing because you see the Holy Spirit is in the trenches of our daily lives with us. The Holy Spirit is working and taking the good work, the good work that we are all already engaging in and exponentiating our work so that our lives and the lives of the people in our families, in our relationships, our communities, the people that we serve are transformed. They're transformed into something that is so much greater than who we are. One of the ways that the Holy Spirit empowers and equips us is by helping us to understand scripture. And then to take our scripture and apply it to our holy, or to our lives. So take today's scripture reading, for example. Today's passage begins with, Since then we have such a hope. We're off to a good start, aren't we? So far the text is straightforward, it's easy to understand, and hope is a good thing. We all have hope for things in our life and for our loved ones' lives. We have hopes for the world. And from hope, the passage moves into saying, we act with great boldness. And when you put the two of these things together, Paul is telling us that our hope inspires us to act boldly. And that is exciting. Because you never, ever know what is going to happen when the Holy Spirit is moving. And I think the transformation of our social hall this week is a great and wonderful example of how the Spirit has moved recently in our community. We never dreamed that that would be a possibility, and then so many things fell into place because the Holy Spirit was moving and we were responding as a community to the movement of the Spirit. But sometimes things that are bold and exciting can also make us uncomfortable, especially for people who are a little bit more understated, people who like to work behind the scenes to make things happen. But as we look at the passage, Paul almost seems to digress in his writing. From this optimism and excitement that he starts with, he then begins to write about Moses and Dales and the Old Covenant, moving from a very clear and concise statement 
to several verses that quite honestly aren't quite as easy to understand. So what is it that Paul is trying to tell us in verses 13 through 16? And what does it have to do with the Holy Spirit? You see, in these verses, Paul is referring to the law as he writes. And an initial reading of the passages may leave you with the impression that Paul views the law in a negative light. But as we dig deeper in our study of Scripture, we see that Paul is using a strategy in this passage that he often employs. And it's called a lesser to greater argument. You see, one of the ways that the Israelites understood law was that it served as a set of rules and principles to guide their path, to guide their life, so that they lived their life in a way that was pleasing and obedient to God. You see, the law helps us understand what God's expectations are of our behavior. The law helps guide us to make decisions that are right and to avoid sin. But despite God's gift of the law, the Israelites and all of humanity, for that matter, have continued to sin. And this is because it was never, ever the purpose or the function of the law to give us a victory over sin. You see, the purpose and function of the law was to guide us away from sin towards a behavior that was pleasing to God. Freedom from sin and death come from the new covenant that was established by Jesus dying on the cross and being raised on the third day. Freedom from sin and death, the freedom that Paul writes about in this passage, comes from life in Christ. Now Paul isn't telling us that law is bad or unnecessary or invalid. Paul is telling us that law is a gift from God. But Paul is also teaching us that while the law is a wonderful tool for guiding us, that the glory of God, that the glory of God cannot be fully revealed in the law. And the reason for that is because the glory of God can only be fully revealed in Jesus Christ. Thus, the greater gift, the greater gift of the law is Jesus and the new covenant. And in Jesus, that veil is removed and the light of Christ shines bright in our lives and the world. And as we become more and more like Jesus, as the Holy Spirit is working in our lives and in the world around us, something remarkable happens. And that is that the world around us begins to reflect the kingdom of God. The world begins to reflect less suffering and less pain and despair. The pain and suffering and despair that we at times experience in our lives, but also the pain and the suffering and despair that we experience in our communities and in the world around us. You see, when we have faith and trust in Jesus, we experience a freedom that enables us to act boldly. And we see this in today's text. Because of our faith and trust in Jesus, we have hope. And since we have such a hope, we can act with great boldness. But what does it look like to act with boldness when we have the hope of Christ. I pondered this this week. What would be a bold act in my own life, in the life of my family, in the lives of my friends, and in the congregation? I pondered it for several days, 
had all sorts of ideas, but then I decided to ask a modern resource. I asked Alexa. Alexa informed me that bold is defined in a variety of ways. I should have known that the first way bold is defined is as a noun, meaning a bold typeface or a letter. It's also defined as an adjective, meaning to act fearlessly. I didn't realize that, that bold is defined as acting fearlessly. How awesome is that, that we are called to be bold and to act boldly in our faith, and that because of our grace and faith in Jesus, we can live without fear and freely. Alexa also informed me that synonyms for bold include courageous and fearless, unafraid and undaunted. As I pondered all of this together, I realized that when we use bold letters, the noun version of the word, we use them to stand out, don't we? To make an important point, to bring attention to something. And when we act boldly in our faith, we stand out. And we bring attention to the glory of God and the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives and in the world around us. But I also realize that bold letters are what the Apostle Paul was writing to the early Christian communities and the letters that we continue to read today. Letters that encourage us to be fearless and courageous in our faith to be undaunted as we face things that seem impossible, to be strong in our actions, and to act boldly as we stand for what is right and stand against the gods of this world. Like the early church, today's world is wracked with challenges. Wrapped with people who behave in unquestionable ways. People failing to see Christ in others. But as disciples, we are all called to share the hope of our faith. Hope for a better tomorrow. Hope for when peace will prevail. Hope for a time when suffering will cease to exist. Hope for that day when every single person will know that they are loved and of value and worth because we are all created in the image of our Creator and God. We are called to act boldly without fear and to share the good news of Jesus with our neighbor. But not only are we called to share the good news boldly, but we are called to act boldly and respond boldly to the Holy Spirit working in our lives. And when we do this, we can fearlessly live into who God created us to be. So one of the other great things about annual conference is it's like a family reunion. You get to see all of these uh, people from all over the state of Virginia that you know, but you don't see any other time of the year. It's an often a time to reminisce and catch up. And this year, I got to have coffee with a dear friend from Arlington, Virginia. It's a gentleman that I traveled with in 2010 to Haiti on a mission trip. And at that time, it was a bold move for both of us. Um, as we went for our first international mission trip together. I left three children at home with my husband. My youngest was two uh, when I traveled to Haiti for the first time. And on that mission trip, we were each invited to share a devotional one night, a devotional that we prepared. And I prepared a devotional on Romans 12 that reflected how our lives should look different in our faith. 
Last Sunday, Ken reminded me of the impact that that devotion had on his life. You see, up to that point in time, Ken had been attending church, but not serving beyond attending in worship. That trip to Haiti triggered eight years of passionate service. Eight years of Ken serving boldly and faithfully. You see, Ken is passionate about poverty and immigration, but most importantly, Ken is passionate about the hope that is offered when we serve others in the name of Jesus. So recently, one of the projects that he was working on with a group of small friends consisted of starting a listserv. This was a simple idea that came up over a discussion of how they could respond to immigrants in their local community. What could they do as individuals to make a difference to a problem that seemed undaunting to them? One of them came up with the idea of starting a listserv. It's actually kind of a pretty dated idea at this point in time when we think about technology. So they began a listserv where people who were immigrants could list needs that they had, and people who wanted to serve and help and walk beside immigrants could respond to these needs. The needs varied from things like needing clothing and furniture to needing legal assistance. And in one short year, they have taken on over 3,000 subscribers. And they are prayerfully discerning where the Spirit is leading them next. You see, during that devotion in Haiti, the Holy Spirit was working and moving in each of our lives, mine and Ken's, albeit in different ways according to our unique gifts and graces. And along the way since that night, the Holy Spirit has been working in our lives, transforming us. Since we have such a hope, we can act with great boldness. What I know for sure is that the Holy Spirit is working in each of your lives, too. That you have been gifted in a way that is unique to who you are, and that God and the Holy Spirit is calling you to act boldly in some way. So I invite you today and this week to reflect and pray about how God is calling you to serve in a bold way. And when we do this, it is good news because the Holy Spirit is equipping us and empowering us to share the good news of Jesus Christ in the world. And that good news has the power to transform all things. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you please pray with me? Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit and all the ways that the Spirit is working in our lives to transform us and the world around us. We pray, O oh God, that you give us the strength and courage, clarity and wisdom to faithfully respond to the Holy Spirit boldly as we share our faith and serve others in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you.